Hello, and welcome back to Near Craft. It has been a little while, so thank you for your patience. But we're back, and there is a lot to do. I am here in a creative version of the Near Craft world at the last point that I saved it. I'm not entirely up to date because <laughs> this is still here. But this is where I want to start today because I will be doing a bunch of terraforming. I want, before I begin on the giant base, the mega base, over here, I want to finish up everything up here and feel like it is exactly in the state that I want it to be. And there is a lot to do because, um, well, I mean, <laughs> most obviously, there's just a lot of mess everywhere. There's holes all over the place, there's floating trees, <laughs> floating boats, uh, random blocks like this, and there's just generally a lot of a lot of weird messy things all over the place. I want to change up the temple because I feel like I can do better <laughs> with what I have here. I want to change up the field here because this has been like this since the very beginning, like episode two and this needs to change. And this whole hillside I want to update too because it's a little raggedy. I want all of this to feel smooth and put together and very peaceful. I also want to move the enchanting setup. It should not be there. So I'm not entirely sure about all the things that I'll get up to, but uh, there will be plenty of time lapses to watch as I do. But. This is not all that I will be working on today. I also need to do a lot with Cavern. So the Cavern Mall must open. It has been too long and I need to actually get this done. So I'll be working on that as well and uh, we'll just see how much we can get done. Let's begin.
I interrupt our lovely little terraforming program to show you a few things on here. So this is, what is this? This is new, this was not here before. Anyhow, uh, this is the location of where all the cavern shops will be. This is the beginning of the mall. So it is under the shopping district. I need to create a proper entrance for it. But um, this is it, this is the beginning of the mall. The mall that cavern, which is Dodo, Christian, and I, this is the mall we'll have. So I have four shop fronts ready to be made and a bunch of stuff to go inside of them. So I tried to make this design pretty similar to the cavern design. I like it. I think it looks really cool. It looks very underground, but also just modern enough. You know what I'm saying? Oh wait, before we get back to the terraforming though, I think there's, um, I think there might be a gift from Sage. Cause Easter was just recently and I think Sage dropped off Easter gifts. Yes, happy Easter little man. <laughs> a name tag, hell yeah. Nice, this is really cool. Thank you so much, Sage. Happy belated Easter. Why is this missing a... Every time I go in here, something is, is broken. All right, now back to the terraforming. I have so much to show you. I'm very excited. I have done a tremendous amount up here, and I know that some of you like time lapses a little more than others, but if you watch them all, thank you very much, because I know that a lot of these Nearcraft episodes are very chaotic and uh, a lot happens, but what I like to do most of all when I'm in here is just this sort of stuff. All the terraforming, and look at how cool the space looks now. It just has an atmosphere about it that it did not before, and I really, really love everything that I did here. So, let me walk you through some of this. I did a live stream, which, if you don't want to miss these live streams, turn on the bell notification. Oh, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Okay, I'll be back very shortly. Oh god, uh... Uh, hello. Today, we're doing a thing called Sage Blocks Bradley into a Hole.
Actually, most of the rest of the server is usually way more peaceful than we are here. Okay, listen, listen. I, I'm not saving you. Bruh, how the, how the heck do I get out? <laughs> I will certainly do another at some point. It was so much fun. And I had this little pond built. And we named a couple axolotls on stream. We have Fred, and we have Bubbles. <laughs> and they've been hanging out in here. This little pond and waterfall that I built. And this is where the mossy sin shrine went. And Joshua got to put a little thing in here on stream. And these things are now immortalized in the server. So if you want anything of yours immortalized in the server, don't miss a live stream. I also did this on stream. So this is the Mossy Temple, my current base. And I removed all the textured blocks and then put everything back in. No, I did this part first, this section, and it looked so peaceful and just good. <laughs> and I thought that I could definitely make the temple better. I thought that I could really uh, elevate it. And I did, in my opinion. Uh, there's these here, which are supposed to be water-worn parts of the build. And then there's a little more greenery in it. There's some places where leaves have entirely replaced the wall and you can see right through it. And then over here, this is perfect timing. This is my coffin bed, <laughs> which was also a suggestion from stream. And this is where I sleep now, in a coffin, in a temple. And I also did this on stream. I really like this thing. It looks so cool. It gives me more storage and it's just such a cool room. And then of course the rest of the storage is still there. And then at the top of the temple, we still have the sacrificing place, of course. So let's get into the rest of this stuff. I tried to pick particular plants that I wanted to be in here. So I have these, which I think match really well with the tree over there. And then I also tried to match up the colors in the path a little bit better. So there used to be andesite. I replaced all of the andesite with these tough blocks because it has the little hints of green in here. And I thought that that complemented all the, the mossy themed things way better. Oh, there's so many options of what to look at next. I don't know where to go. Um, I have not yet done any interior in this thing. Ooh, let me, let me pick up this block. It doesn't need to be here. I've not yet done any interior in here. I will eventually, but uh, it's taken long enough to get this video done. I wanted to get it out to you guys, so we will do that another time. I added another path here. It felt like I needed one. And then I added this bridge over here. And I really like this bridge because I'm trying to make I tried to make these bits of deep slate feel like they're a natural part of the environment. So somewhere there's clumps of this mossy stone and in other places, like right here where the path is built into, there's these clumps of deep slate. And so this bridge moves from deep slate over to the mossy stuff and I really like it. Also the bees are under here. I need a better way of getting to them maybe, but that's, they're just covered by the hillside. Sorry bees. Uh, but yeah, this is the little bridge. I really like it. And then it goes over here to the cherry blossom tree, which I don't, I don't entirely know that I'm happy with this tree. I think it might be something that I continue to mess around with. I really like the bottom part. I like how this pathway is fitted into the root system here. And I like the enchanting setup being in here. I like this bottom part. The leaves, I'm not so sure about. They look a little messy to me. And so I got some input from other people on here about what I should do to change it. And I'll probably keep messing around with it, but like that other part of the temple over there, not right now. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and see what I want to do. So, these are where I moved the animals to. These are the chicken coops. And let me try to throw some more in here. This chicken is uh, alone. Any more? Ha ha, now you have a friend. Perfect. Maybe not the most effective design for a chicken coop ever, but I can just pop in here and then fly out and none of the chickens will get out. Uh, sometimes their faces do poke through the sides of it, like that. <laughs> but uh, we don't need to talk about that. Then there is the sheep pen here. 
And a chicken, too, I guess. I wanted them to have nicer places to live. The sheep pit still exists. There's no sheep in it anymore, though. It's down here. Ah, and I'm down here. Um, and it still says sheep pit, so don't worry. It's not gone anywhere. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. Uh, I did keep this because <laughs> Sage did not want it moved, so it is still here. But I tried to connect it into the landscape and this has a little entry walkway I thought was so cool. It looks like a tiny little hill that was carved into, and then you can see that the deep slate exists beneath this moss, which I think ties in this big deep slate structure a little bit better, because it makes sense that they could have gotten a lot of it right below the surface if it, if it all looks like that underground. I hope that makes sense. It probably does, maybe. But yeah, I really like it. It reminds me of that little bit in uh, Hobbiton, where Bilbo runs through it and he's going, uh, I'm going on an adventure. That's what this part is to me. I like it a lot. And what else have I done? I've done a lot. I've, uh, <laughs> I've replaced some of the moss with this green concrete powder because it gives just a little bit of variation. It looks really nice. These are little pebbles those stone buttons. These are dark oak saplings, and if they're not in a set of four, they will not grow. So you can put them here by themselves and they'll just be a bush. And they work really well with all of the colors I've got going on. I also replaced some of the moss with these leaves occasionally and made sure that there was moss on the other side of them so that it looks green from all angles and there's no dirt or stone underneath it. And I really like those. I need to move all these boxes. There's still boxes, chests, all over the place. I need to do a little bit of cleanup, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm running out of space in there, so I might make the hut sort of a gardening shed, put all the plant stuff in here and keep everything else in there because I am running out of space and without a mega base to be able to put stuff in, it's becoming a problem. So we gotta fix that soon. <laughs> I cleared out a lot of trees from over here and cleaned up this area a lot and I'm slowly spreading the moss further and further away. We'll see how far in the continent it can one day reach. <laughs> that was a wild way to land. So I hope that you guys like this place. I really like it, certainly. And I spent a tremendous amount of time on this. This project in total, uh, it's probably nearing mm, 30 plus hours. <laughs> It's, it takes a lot more time than it might look like it takes, but I also, I go slow with it because I want it to feel right. That's most important to me, that it, it feels proper to me. So, all that being said, let me take you over to Cavern, where I have done a few more things. I like flying with this camera mod a little bit off to the side. It's just, it's very fun for me. And here it is. Is, did I get the timing right? Yes, here it is. This is what Cavern is currently looking like. So, I did a good bit more here. I, oh, there's a beacon here now. This is new. So, I brought some of this texturing here that I used as a gradient between this and the stone up here. I brought that over to here as well because this part looked a little bit empty. So now that texturing is more evident in more places. And I think that that ties things together really nicely. And Christian, oh, I need to clean this up too. I have boxes scattered everywhere. <laughs> Christian added this big chandelier, which is beautiful. I love it. And he started doing this stuff, some terraforming down here, which looks super cool. But I wanna show you something else that I did up here. These stairs. I have made these stairs, and this also goes through the textured blocks here, the gradient, all the way up into the stone section when you hit the meeting room, which is this at the top, which we, we still need to make it look nice. There's so much to do, always so much to do. And I did a little bit of texturing in here, so I added some andesite, some stairs and slabs to just make it look a little more caverny but this is not all I did with cavern because as I said we have a mall so let me show you the cavern enterprises mall 
or the beginning of it. There's, it will expand. Hopefully it will expand. If we make money, it will expand. Here we are in the shopping district. So before I go into here, I actually wanna check the junk drawer real quick. I know that I'm out of stock of a few things because I haven't been able to be online as much over the past few weeks. One diamond, okay. <laughs> Ooh, I should also show you how many diamonds we have now. Just gotta check, check all of our boxes. Okay, yeah, so mending is completely out of stock. And so is unbreaking three. What is this, fortune? There's some more of those, and then some random books. Okay, so one diamond is our profits. Let me look in here. Ooh, look at this. 50 diamonds, 50 diamond blocks. And I owe two of these diamonds that I have to Dodo because we finally made a sale in the the bone meal mausoleum. We finally made a sale of four diamonds, so two of those will go to Dodo. Our only profit so far. But now, let me show you the beginning of the Cavern Enterprises Mall. Here it- I missed a block. Oh no! And I missed blocks. Okay, so I so I need to fix a couple things, clearly. But let's have a look inside first. This is what it looks like. And it is very easily expandable if we want to add more. And uh, I want to see if we have any sales. Not sold any of those. That's not very surprising. What about gold? People like gold, right? Apparently not enough. Okay. What, what about blackstone? No? Okay. Well, there's more to check, so don't worry. Leather? No? What about every color of wool? Nope. No sales. Okay. Uh, what about quartz? Please? Nope. Nope. Not, uh, not one diamond. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> okay, so let me break through the wall. There's, uh, there's probably quartz in here somewhere, the type of quartz I need. Yes, this is the stuff. Okay, perfect. I need to go uh, fix the stuff up here that I missed before. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now let me just dump everything back in here. Okay, there we go. So, this is the mall. I tried to make it look like a combination of modern and a little bit caverny, and I really like how it turned out with all the different stalls too, and it feels very akin to the cavern headquarters. And there's a an ender chest in every stall for ease of access to your money, to, uh, to give it to us. Maybe, please. <laughs> I would, uh, I would like to make a sale. At least one, soon, maybe. Ow. What is there left to show you? Well, or Beaven has a series of games that he has been planning, and they are taking place somewhere up here. What is going on? There's a lot going on. Okay, well, this is the vague location of <laughs> the entrance to Orbeven's games, and basically, he, well, this is not a good angle at all, is it? <laughs> he has compiled a lot of different uh, game show ideas that he is going to have some of us do, and uh, I intend to compete, and I intend to win. I may have mentioned this before, I am a little bit competitive. <laughs> and uh, a series of games? Yes, sign me up, and I intend to win every single one. So, we will be signing up for that very soon, and hopefully that will begin in the next episode. And also, hopefully, what will begin in the next episode is actual buildings in the mega base. Now, I know that today's episode was a little bit different than normal, and if you enjoyed it, let me know. <laughs> if you didn't, let me know. <laughs> but I personally really enjoyed it, and I am so happy with how everything has turned out, and... I will see you in the next episode. Bye.